is uh, my Blair Vogue's over here on my left. Good evening, Mzansi. Welcome to Trading SA right here on SABC 3. It is Tuesday. And as the leader of all things happening, darling, <laughs> what? I have chosen to give you the realest serve and to keep you up to speed with the hottest, the latest trends and topics. As usual, I'm joined by my loyal co-hosts, this guy called Mable. Opuma Puma Ble. All the way from the great city of Amlaz. Amlaz. And uh, homegirl over here, Kapelma, who's actually not a homegirl. I'm not a homegirl. Looking girl. fabulous. No. Alma Fontaine, the hair is on. From <laughs> so there's, like, true, true story, in the East Rand, there's a suburb called Alma Park, even with an Alma Park primary. This is Alma Fontaine now. Looking hot. I love it. You're looking very I've renamed good. It. Keep it up. Go okay. On. So today, a year ago, uh, speaking of hair, mm. we should celebrate this. Mm. History was made. Do you remember? Yes. South Africa! Guys, I have goosebumps. Oh, that was so beautiful. What, what Can I be a bit of a downer? Because Zosie inspired us to take up our place and cement ourselves. And 2020 just did not do her justice. Mm. Forget the fact that there was a global pandemic. We needed to have seen her everywhere and endorsing everything mm. and raising all the money. This for is on the Miss Universe organizations. I feel like they could have done Do we need to write a letter to the manager? Can I, I speak to, to the manager, yeah. please? Can yes, someone definitely. call the Miss Universe organization? We need, we need a re-up of Miss Zozi. Yes. Please. <laughs> All right. <sighs> That's enough of that. Let's oh, do top trends. <laughs> Together. Mm. Gather around, oh, my faithful good. friends. Oh. This is whew. this next story unraveled like a scene from a Hollywood blockbuster. It comes after the special investigative unit, the SIU, raided the offices of the scandal-ridden, scandal-ridden National Lotteries Commission this morning as part of their investigation into allegations of rampant corruption, nepotism, fraud, mm. and maladministration at the organisation. And this is what the spokesperson of the SIU, Kaiser Kanyako, had to say today. Just take a listen. Some of the allegations, even if I can't go into detail, is among others to say there was favoritism when it comes to uh, grants that were given and there were intentions where in some instances people were given grants. All right, so you know, it, it being Twitter, they had a lot to say. Umam Gwezana said this, the SIU, the lotto employees' wives, hide the money that their husbands steal. These cases are close to our hearts because innocent daycare center teachers lost their jobs because of this. And Ungubeni L had this to say. He said, Lotto also paid five million to a youth NGO based in Limpopo. It's always somewhere in Limpopo. Mm. When asked, the center never received a cent, but the money left the Lotto bank account. A case of disappearing millions. Small wonder why the prof doesn't dream of vacating that warm seat. Mm. Now, a ground up hand has been very vocal about corruption and fraud at the NLC, the National Lotteries Commission. On the line, we're joined by Ground Up's editor Nathan Geffen to weigh in on President Ramaphosa's proclamation and the raid. Nathan, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. What is going on here? Hi, thanks for having me. So for the last two years, uh, we've been reporting, our reporter Raymond Joseph and uh, a governor of Anton van Sale in the Limpopo Mirror in uh, Louis Trichat, we've been reporting story after story after story of how lottery money has been misspent. And that's a euphemistic way of, of putting it. Mm -hmm. Quite likely the money's been stolen. Um, hundreds of millions of rands uh, when you add up all of these projects that we've, we've uncovered. And finally, today, we're starting to see concrete results of, of that. Sure. And, and we're quite excited by it. But, but I will be happy once uh, there are people running the lottery who are committed to making sure that it goes to the causes that it's meant to go to and that the people who've been stealing the money uh, are prosecuted. Okay, Nathan, you guys revealed that the NLC's COO's family, uh, family benefited from the NLC grants. Né? And now this is the craziest thing. 
apparently 8 million rands was spent on a Facebook page. No, man. And how, do, <laughs> how, like, how deep does this rot run? No, I mean, uh, uh, that's the kind of thing that we've uncovered indeed. Um, and uh, we've, we've uncovered uh, money going to organizations where the organizations have, uh, the people who run the organizations aren't even aware of the money having gone to them, but the money has left the lottery bank account, as, as the one person said on Twitter. Uh, we've um, shown how grants have been given to organizations uh, who the, director, the directors are relatives of the people at the top of the lottery. And, and that COO, by the way, has been on suspension since February and, and earned a couple of million rand uh, of his salary in the process whilst not having to go into work. So, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it, it, it's really, the, the corruption is deep. Um, and, and, it's, and it's really tragic because, um, as most people would know, of course, every week uh, there's a lottery draw and people win money, uh, but uh, uh, about 25 to 30% of that lottery money is supposed to go to good causes. And it's supposed to be given to organizations around the country that are helping to develop the country. And many organizations have been complaining that they cannot get lottery funds, good organizations. Yeah. And yet there's some really rotten organizations um, mm -hmm. that, are, that have been getting uh, what are almost certainly corrupt funds from the lottery. Rotten or hijacked organizations, Nathan. But to further hijacked, that point, yeah. during the course of, your, course of your work, you've also been sued. Just lay that out for us. Who has sued you and in what capacity and why? So the COO of the lottery um, is suing us for defamation. Um, a lawyer uh, by the name of Leslie Ramolifo, who we've um, implicated in, in numerous um, dodgy lottery deals, is suing us. Um, uh, some a, a rather um, small and unheard of previously organization sued us to try and stop us from reporting more on the lottery. They said we were breaching confidentiality, mm. but their case fell apart. Yeah. Oh, so, okay, well, thank you for the great work you do, Nathan, and thank your you. team at Ground Up. We'll definitely keep an eye on the story. Very concerning stuff. Uh, next up on the show, we will be joined by Miss Lira. So, hashtag ta on three, way in. Good. He's already waving his arm. Every day. Okay, we'll see you next. I wanna Bye. wear a smile. Some December vibes. Speaking of December vibes, welcome back to Training SA. This past weekend, students from across the country proved that they definitely do not deserve matric qualifications <laughs> because they attended the Belita Rage Festival. Now, if you've never heard of Rage, it happens annually. And um, you can see on the photos here that social distancing isn't at the order of the day. Normal. So now this has led to a spike in COVID-19 cases. Duh. Because, you know. Today the Gauteng Health Department is scrambling to trace 1,300 supposedly smart people mm. who went there and did this. Mm. And so the health minister, Mr. Zolim Kize, urged, actually Dr. Zolim Kize, mm. urged all at, uh, attendees to actually quarantine and get tested. The next two leagues of, rage, uh, of the Rage event, which have been dubbed as a super spreader event, have been cancelled with ticket prices being put on hold. Twips obviously weighed in and Uze Tukola said this. I said, almost all music festival organizers took the bullet and postponed their events because it was the right and safe things to do. One decided that they don't have the time for that and look where we are now. And the Duchess of Joburg said this, wait, so parents were allowing kids to attend mm. Rage during a pandemic. Mm. Why are people behaving as though COVID is gone? Mm -hmm. No doubt they'll be the same ones saying how poor our health system is, forgetting that they allowed such. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that are involved in this. The parents allowing the kids to actually go out and the kids not respecting the, the, the regulations, wearing masks and whatever, including the people that are hosting the event. Sorry, asking for a friend. I must be the dumb kid in yeah. the class. The whole entire point of this event mm. is to let loose mm -hmm. cut loose forget mm -hmm. there are rules yeah how are we social distancing we don't go to ibiza to social distance how is this even ever like possible 
Am I missing something? I feel no. like if you, after the year we've had, still do not understand the basics of how COVID works, mm -hmm. I don't care how well you did in your exams, you should not get your matric results. I mean, I'm just not shocked. Write it, it again. I'm, I'm not shocked that it actually happened in KZN because the videos that I was seeing during mm. lockdown in KZN, mm. people, there were people on the streets in Umlazi during level five. Yo, Emperor. Do you your must, job. Yeah, speak to and, your people. fix it. Fix no. it, my player. This is not cool. <laughs> anyway, on that very hectic note, uh, First for Women has heeded the call to fight gender-based violence, and they've brought together some of the most recognize, recognizable voices in our country to say enough is enough. And tonight we are joined by singer, songwriter, Lyra, who along with Gigi Lamain, Good Luck and Mary Chan, worked together in, on the reworked version of the song, My Body, to raise awareness and funds in fight of GBV. Mm. Hi, Lira, and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Miss Lira, it's always a pleasure. Now, tell us why this cause was so, is so important to you. Just lay it out for us. I think it's a very important, um, this gender-based violence is a pandemic in our country right now. Yeah. It really has been for a while. I was actually even in uh, Namibia over lockdown and it, it was just as rife. And it surprised me that, you know, it's just so prevalent um, throughout the continent. So it's something we do need to speak about. Um, and I was very privileged to just lend my voice um, to the mm -hmm. song, just to raise awareness and to do something about it, you know, to really just um, raise our voices and say, this is not okay. All right. So in addition to raising funds for the First for Women uh, Foundation, what do you hope that this song will instill in South African women? Well, firstly, the song um, was written for young children. And I think some of these um, issues start when we are young. We, we, we do not um, recognize that our bodies are sanctuaries. We make a contribution. Thank okay. you so much. So go stream that song, My Body, and make sure that you check out the First for Women Foundation. They're doing amazing work. And uh, we'd love everyone to get stuck in and support this phenomenal cause. Now, we are still on your timeline. You're watching Training SA. And in some interesting sporting news, okay. Breakdancing will officially become an Olympic sport at the 2024 Paris Olympics, my Blair, This is what you've been waiting for. <laughs> my Blair, don't, don't look so sad. Why is this even a thing? Did you not love Stomp? And what's that step up? Oh, step up and step stomp. Up and I liked it because it was a movie. Now imagine you've got, you're, you're a gold medalist for breakdancing. Yes. Uh, excuse me. That is highly athletic not just anybody can okay, step okay, up and okay. Like, okay. so okay. if breakdancing is an olympic sport what else would you like to add i would like to add pub crawling so pub crawling, yeah pub crawling that is an olympic sport at the it's about it's about endurance it's about making good choices i'm, and, I'm not what? sure about the alcohol in um Riffin, <laughs> have you got have you got an idea for us let me give you a real sport my play it's what? called hair braiding Umluga. all right there's speed, there is technique, there is creativity, there is how tight you do it so we can be like, oh girl, I love the plaits, but they're not too tight so that you don't give your clients alopecia so that they can't come back and do their hair. <laughs> it, is a, it is a skill, it's the, a science. And the gold medal event for yeah. braiding is if you can plait both my hair and Rafilwe's hair equally <laughs> Now you're asking for a lot. I initially thought about um, uh, uh, drinking games, but then when you said pub crawl, I realized that it's a bad idea. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't think we should have people get drunk and give them medals for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do you know why I want that, Emma? It's because I know, Uguti, only South Africa would lead every year. We would get the gold medal, we'll get the silver medal, we'll get the bronze medal. I'd, I'd, I'd like to change Aina. my submission. Yuck, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to a quick ad break. And when we come back, we catch up with the Global Citizen 2020 prize winner, Brenda Madumise Pajibo. She is the co-founder of Wise for Africa, an organization which responds to the large number of sexual harassment, uh, sexual violations and sexual assault cases of women. You don't want to miss that. See you after the break.
<laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching Trending SA right here on SABC3. Now, Global Citizen this December 2020 is celebrating the heroes among us who've stepped up with strength and passion and, hum and humanity against the, the background of such unprecedented global challenges. Now, the second annual Global Citizen Prize will honor those global citizens who exemplify the leadership that we absolutely need right now and inspire all of us to raise our voices for very necessary change. This year, the prize was awarded to lawyer and gender activist Brenda Madimuse Pajibo, and she joins us today to share a bit about the work she, she does. Welcome to the show, Brenda. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. <laughs> How is this prize going to help you in the work you do? Mm. It, I suppose it one is a recognition and acknowledgement of the work that we have done thus mm. far, right? Mm. But I, but also it propels all of us to take a stand and end gender-based violence mm. and deal with the structural drivers of gender-based violence, which mm. are patriarchy, mm -hmm. masculinity, toxic as it is, misogyny, and just deal with the cultural norms that drives this violence. Mm. Yeah. So un until we get to that point, we will not rest. Yeah. yeah. So Advocate, you, you basically, um, your work is mainly around women's rights and you've got a foundation. Um, I just want to know what inspired the work that you do and what, what is it exactly that you do? This work was, was and, and I've, I've been looking back at my life and I've realized that every time I, I, I do work around women's rights and I went back to the first work that I did was around termination of pregnancy mm -hmm. bill right and I remember the pushback that we received then I mean you're talking 1995 96 mm -hmm. everyone thought that termination of pregnancy when you talk there's right to life and we were clobbered by by religious groups and everybody else but we stood our ground right that because we believe that is about the women's right to choose right and if you understand that principle from day one then it's going to be easy to fight for other rights because then we have established the, 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 fun, the fundamentals, mm -hmm. right? So I've looked at that and I've looked at uh, over the years how I've evolved in my life and kept on coming in and out of women's issues because sometimes it gets tiring. And 2018 was the, 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 the year that when we went out into the streets as women of this country, 1st of August 2018, I knew that we're not going to go back. Yeah. And that's why today you have many of us talking about gender-based balance because we've put it on the agenda where it belongs and it's going to, we're not going to stop and, and ensure that it yeah. gets lowered back mm. and, and it becomes another matter that we don't talk about. This time we deal with it, we address it, we show up, we get engaged, we step up. Mm. What I'm curious about is um, how you gauge the impact of your work, and perhaps that'll also be answered by the next part of the question is how you do that work of really entrenching and normalizing things that were taboo before, as, yeah. you've, as you've alluded to with your work for um, it's, it's, promotion. It's been bold to speak about those issues and not being scared of who is in the room, mm -hmm. right? So we, and I, I curse a lot, so that helps. Uh, and then it sort of deals with mm. the, when you walk into a room and it's a room full of men and uh, you, you pick up the energy and everything else. And we deal with it head on because unless you do that, you are going to keep on not saying what you, you want to say and how, what you feel, right? Uh, so we're not afraid to write letters, to show up where people don't expect us to show up and mm -hmm. say this is not going to happen mm -hmm. right so you will i mean we've done quite a number of things that people never thought that will happen we stopped the president from addressing the chairman's uh, dinner uh, with with uh, with uh, power fm mm -hmm. i mean so that so we'll go in and, and we'll get criticized but we understand why we're doing it right so that the message uh, resonates and people understand that it's important for all of us to have that voice and not allow it to be muted i'd love if one thing out of all of this for people to become aware of wise for africa and the work yeah. you do so one of the things there is you're setting up a legal defense fund yeah. for women yeah how can people help this cause along specifically 
So we there's we are on a platform that talks about global giving. Mm. So whatever contribution you can make, whether it's twenty rands, whether it's fifty rands, that goes a long way. I mean, on a daily basis, every morning when we wake up, we are inundated with SMSs, text messages, calls of women who wish to leave abusive relationship, and, and most of it is intertwined with ch access to your children. A divorce, mm. maintenance for yourself. So all of it is, is in, in one. So you can't look at violence against women and children in isolation of all of these things. Uh, you know, because when, 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 when there's a fight between partners, uh, you, you already know that children are involved and there's a potential of a, a, a divorce. They, they fight over custody of children. And most times women don't know what to do, where to go. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And that's what that's the work we do. And also just working with them into this foreign territory called law, yeah. where just w walking into a court in itself, it's threatening mm. if you're not used to it. So when we are there, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. Advocate, yeah. we are slap bang in the middle of the 16 days of activism. Um, I just want to know what message do you have for South African men? Quickly, just... Here's my message to South African men, and I always say it, is that start holding each other accountable. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for your time, Advocate. Thank you. Really, really powerful. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on your work. Once again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The good work. All right. So that's all that we have for you tonight. You can catch the Global Citizen Prize Award ceremony right here on SABC3 at half past nine on the 20th of December, hosted by Grammy Award winner John Legend. See you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Can you say Jean Lejean? Jean Lejean. <laughs> <laughs>